The first Indiana Jones movie ended with the Ark of the Covenant being locked away into a vast warehouse. There's a lot of symbolism, perhaps unintentional, but what does it really mean? In Old Testament times, the presence of God appeared between two angel figurines on top of the Ark. Today, His presence manifests to those who diligently seek Him. Pursuing His presence isn't for those who easily give up, but it sure beats the alternative, just settling for knowing about God. By the end of last year, my dissatisfaction with my daily times with God had reached a new low. They were too mechanical, with my long list of intercessory requests and trudging through yet another New Testament chapter that I had read almost exactly three months earlier. Something had to change. I had heard some good things about the writings of A.W. Tozer, a believer who placed a high priority on worshiping God in his daily life. I felt God drawing me to this material, so I bought two of Tozer's books, The Knowledge of the Holy, and My Daily Pursuit, which is a morning devotional. I learned the only way we can worship God is by having a clear idea of who He really is. Otherwise, we might be worshiping a product of our imagination. Tozer reminded me of how God is infinitely beyond man. He fills heaven and earth. God also stands outside of time and sees the ends from the beginning and His mercy and justice are not conflicting qualities. God found a way for them to kiss in His Son. So how do I go about worshiping the Lord now? Each day I tell God I need Him more than the food I eat, the water I drink, and the air I breathe. I'm learning there's a big difference between being able to string isolated scriptures into a doctrine and knowing the God who wrote them. The purpose of the Bible is to lead us to God, not to itself. Tozer emphasizes meditation on the Word of God. For me, that means retelling a biblical story, trying to think what the characters were experiencing, maybe even asking God some questions. I speak my musings aloud to him. Tozer includes a verse from a hymn every day in his devotional. Sometimes I'm amazed that some of the writers of what I thought were dead hymns really knew God deeply. It's just that I had heard them sung so many times in a dreary manner that I became inoculated to the life they contained. On the other hand, have you noticed how many songs sung in church have very little to do with praising and worshiping God? They are just evangelism jingles in disguise. Now I spend more time singing. I love the scripture choruses, some of the songs from when I was younger like Lift Jesus Higher, and this favorite. We are able to go up and take the country, to possess the land from Jordan to the sea. Though the giants may be there, our way to hinder, the Lord will give the victory. I close my times with God, thinking about how Isaiah felt when he saw the Lord high and lifted up, with his train filling the temple. I consider how Jesus' appearance was transformed before Peter, James, and John on the Mount of Transfiguration. I also think about how Moses was so saturated with God's presence that his skin glowed. And I try to be quiet, giving God an opportunity to express himself. Shortly before God gave the Ten Commandments, He wanted to speak to the Hebrew people, but they preferred to hear Him secondhand through Moses. Many of us have made the same mistake. The good news is, we can experience God for ourselves. Let the Word of God do what it was designed to do. Lead us into His presence. This is Steve Eastman for Wait Till You Hear This. Discover more stories like this one on our website, waittillyouhearthis.com.